It was the second lowest SmackDown rating in eight years. So as D-Generation X would say, it is time to break it down. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your WWE SmackDown quarter hour breakdown for the 4th of October 2024. Now, the overall rating for this show came in at 1.518 million. SmackDown just about staying above the one and a half mark, but I think that sooner rather than later, I would say in the next couple of weeks, I think we'll see SmackDown dip underneath that. But they stayed above it this week. Let's find out how they done it. Quarter one, eight o'clock to eight fifteen. AJ Styles, Carmelo Hayes, and an LA Night Live promo started the show with one point four five million, and this was the lowest rated quarter of the show so they start off with the lowest rate and then it went up so i mean that's kind of good that at least the show was heading in the right direction i guess so i mean maybe there's a positive sign there you can take from that key demo six hundred and ten thousand for quarter one we're going to quarter two we got a one percent increase in viewership to 1.463 million uh, but a one percent no decrease in the key demo so they lost five thousand in that Quarter three, it was Meechin versus Chelsea Green, plus one in viewership to 1.472. That obviously was the dumpster match. The key demo didn't go up. So, I mean, an increase of 1%, not bad. Quarter four, 8.45 to 9 p.m., it was Meechin versus Green continued. We got an AJ Styles backstage angle with the injury update. We got a Bianca Belair, Jade Cargo, Naomi, and a Bailey backstage angle. We then got the Street Profits with BFAB backstage. And then we got the Bailey promo, and this promo was absolutely horrendous. But quarter four did go up 6% in fuel ships, so not bad. 1.553 million. So far, the highest rated quarter of the show. Also went up 6% in the key demo to 641,000. So quarter four heading in the right direction. Quarter 5, 9 o'clock to 9.15, Bailey, Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton, a live angle with Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, Legado Del Fantasma, A-Town Down, uh, basically just all making fun of Chelsea Green and the fact that she smells because she got thrown into the dumpster. We had Nick Aldas back there as well. He had a little backstage conversation with Carmelo Hayes. And then we got the beginning of Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton. Quarter 5 again. Slightly going up 2% this time to 1.584 million, but a 2% downgrade in the key demo to 629,000. So, quarter five going up, top of the hour though, you totally expect that. Quarter six, 9.15 to 9.30 pm, it was Naomi versus Tiffany Stratton continued. We then got a recap of the bloodline, and that was pretty much it for quarter six. Not a lot happening. Minus 3% in the fuel ship down to 1.538 million and also down 3% in the key demo down to 611,000. We go into quarter seven. We've got Anaya Jax and Tiffany Stratton backstage angle. Then we get the start of the main event triple threat tag team ladder match. Tamatonga, Tongaloa versus DIY versus the Street Profits. This went down 3%. Strange that the match just began and it went down 3%. So it went down 3% to 1.497 million. And it went up 2% in the key demo to 625,000. But then we go into quarter 8. And it was just a continuation of the match. So Bloodline versus DIY versus Street Profits. Just to a finish from 9.45 to 10pm. Fewership went up 6% to 1.588 million. And the quarter went up 8% to 676,000 and this finished with Smackdown having its highest quarter in viewership and highest quarter in key demo coming in the final quarter, quarter 8 so yeah there you go, the main event then slightly did more than everything else but I mean when you look at the numbers they're not great, the lowest number 1.45 highest number 1.588. I mean, I, I guess if you want to give them a bit of credit here or look at it from a positive standpoint, they almost well they gained what from quarter one to quarter eight. There was a hundred. There was one hundred and thirty-eight thousand more people watching. 
from the start to the finish. Now, yes, yeah, some they did tune out at certain points, so it's not like it was, you know, consistently. But there was a hundred and thirty-eight thousand people more watching come the end of the show than there was in the beginning of the show. So, I mean, that's a minor positive, I guess. Same with the key demo, obviously. Uh, you know, more people finished up watching that at the end of the show. So. That's what it is, guys. That's your SmackDown quarter hour ratings there. I thought it was just a bit of a dead show, though, to be honest. Um, you know, no Reigns, no Cody Rhodes in the build-up to Bad Blood. The, the, the go-home shows now really do suck. I think the only time to actually try and give you something decent on the go-home show is, is when it's in a foreign country. But, I mean, I say that. They did give us a ladder match, so, I mean, it is what it is. It's just a shame all the tag teams in the ladder match suck. It's a shame we don't have we don't have the Dudleys anymore. We don't have Edge and Christian. We don't have the Hardys. We don't have any of those guys. You know we've just got crappy tag teams now that we don't care about. Bum tag teams that absolutely nobody gives a shit about. So unfortunately, that's the situation that we're in right now in pro wrestling. You can give us great match types, but at the end of the day, the people in the matches we don't care about them. We're all bums. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Being Fog Wrestling. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Till then, peace.